week's online lesson. Today we're going to be making banana bread. We've got some learning intentions for you. So we're going to be practicing and following a recipe. Uh, we are going to be recalling some culinary terms, and these are located within the recipe. We're going to be practicing using different methods of preparation and cooking. So we're going to be mixing, we're going to be blending certain things. Uh, we're also going to be baking. Uh, we are planning and organizing the ingredients. And we're also going to be looking at practicing how we measure and calculate quantities. How will you know if you've been successful? Well, at the end, you'll be able to have baked your banana bread. To make this recipe, there is some equipment that's needed. Now, your equipment is located on your recipe. So we're going to go through that together and make sure we've got everything we need. So number one, a loaf pan. We've got that there. Number two, whisk or fork if making it by hand. So there's our whisk. If we want to do it by hand and we don't have an electric mixer, the whisk will work perfectly. Uh, otherwise, electric mixer, we've got that. And the two attachments for that. Then we need some parchment paper or non stick paper, baking paper, a spatula. Then we've got our cooling rack to cool the banana bread off when it's done. Measuring cups, we've got those, very important. Our mixing bowl, uh, and then We've also got our cake tester, so we know when the cake is done. I've also got an extra tea towel and some oven mitts, so I can get the cake out without burning my hands. So to make this banana bread, you're going to need a few ingredients. Now, on the recipe, these are listed, so refer back to the recipe if you're unsure about what you need. The quantities are also listed along the side there. So to start with, eight tablespoons of butter. Put that there. Then we need one cup of granulated sugar. One cup is two and a half deciliters. So you can see that, that's two and a half deciliters. Then we've got two large eggs. I've got those in here. Put them there. Uh, a quarter of a cup of milk along the side there. We've got one teaspoon of vanilla extract. If you don't have vanilla, don't worry about it. It adds a little bit of extra flavor, but if you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. Four medium ripe bananas, and I've pre-mashed those as well. So they're in there. Then we need two cups of all-purpose flour. Now two cups, one cup was two and a half deciliters, so two cups is five deciliters. Uh, then we've got one teaspoon of baking soda and also one, uh, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and I've mixed those two together in here, so put that to the side. And then, optional, we've got either nuts or chocolate. So I've got half a cup of chopped chocolate in this one. We're not going to use nuts, but if you've got nuts at home, you can add those. If you don't want to add chocolate and you don't want to add nuts, then don't worry about it. You don't need it in the recipe. Step one, preheat your oven. So we want to get this oven onto 175 degrees. So I'm going to turn the dial up to about 175. Now this fan is fan forced. Uh, so we're going to have up and down and the fan going as well. If you don't have a fan in your oven, then don't worry. You can also use this setting. So our oven's on, and the next step now is to prep our pan. So what, how do we do this? We want to take a little bit of butter. I've got a little bit extra here that I cut off, and I'm going to line the insides of this with this butter. Now what this is going to do is it's going to make the parchment paper, or the non-stick paper, stick easily inside the pan. While I'm doing that, I'm also melting my butter, and that has finished. So we're going to open it up. Let that sit for a minute. So, I'm going to line the inside of this pan. Uh, uh, get it all around there. You don't need to have too much butter. If there are some big chunks there, that doesn't matter either because they'll just melt. Uh, but not going to add anything or take anything away from this dish. Before I line the paper, I'm going to wash my hands. I've got a little bit of extra butter on there, so I'm going to wash that off. So my hands are nice and clean. Uh, and now I'm going to take the paper, the parchment paper, long ways. Sit it into the cake till like so. Just push it down. Uh, you're going to have a little bit of overlap here and there. That doesn't matter. Because uh, the cake, the banana bread will still cook evenly. Put it in there, and you can see that that paper starting to stick to the butter sides that we uh, buttered up earlier. Great, so that's done. So I've completed uh, step two, and I've melted my butter. You see, I haven't melted it all the way, and I haven't made it boil. It's important that you don't get it too hot, because if you do, when you go to put the eggs in, you're going to actually cook your eggs, and you don't want that. So the butter goes into my mixing bowl. That's in there, nice. Uh, now, any extra dishes that I've got, I don't want to just leave them laying around in the kitchen, it's going to look really messy, so I'm putting that straight into the sink and I'll wash that later on. Uh, with the butter, I need to put in the sugar and I'm going to combine the two 
using the electric mixer. So my butter and sugar is now mixed together nicely. The next step is to add the eggs. So I'm going to crack these. One and two. Now you see I've got a little bit of egg shell in that. So what I want to do is take a half of the eggshell that I've just cracked and I'm just going to gently scoop that up. Moving it around. So I've got my eggshell out. Let's crack that and then that goes straight into my creamed sugar and butter. So I've got my eggs into my creamed sugar and butter. I'm now going to mix this together until the mixture is light, fluffy and completely smooth. One important step to remember here is while we are mixing, there is going to be a little bit of splash up the sides. So we want to take our spatula and push that down from the sides, get it in, back into the middle there so that it can all be mixed around. You don't want to waste any of the ingredients. You need them all in there to make this banana bread taste exactly how it's supposed to taste. Okay, so that there is my eggs, sugar and butter. Nicely combined, smooth and fluffy. At this stage, I want you to take a photo of this mixture and post it within the document on Google Classroom. Right, so it's time for step five. We're gonna add my milk and my vanilla into this batter and I'm switching to the whisk and I'm gonna mix that in. While I'm mixing, I wanna make sure that I don't mix too much because all of that aeration that we got into that original mixture of the sugar, butter and eggs uh, will go away if we mix it too much. So I wanna be really careful. So, get my vanilla, chuck that in there. Again, my empty bowl is going straight into the sink. Uh, and then I've got my milk. So just give that a quick stir, chuck it in there. Give it a Great, so that's in there. Now I just want to get it just combined so that it's, uh, it doesn't get rid of any of the aeration there and it's just nice and fluffy still. Okay, so it's time for step six. You see we've got four ingredients left that need to go into this mixture before we can put it in the cake tin and into the oven. So step six is to mash in the bananas. Now I've pre-mashed my bananas, but what you can do is you can put them straight into the batter, mix them with the end of the uh, whisk, and just bash them in there. I like my banana bread and my bananas to be quite smooth. You might like them chunky. Because I like them smooth, I have pre-mashed my bananas. Uh, these are going straight into the mixture. And again, like we did with the vanilla and the milk, we don't want to mix this too much. So just gonna combine these ingredients get them together, move them around so that they're all throughout the batter. So step seven, I'm switching from my whisk to a spatula. Uh, th at this step, we're gonna add our flour and our baking soda into this mixture. Uh, once this is done, you're also gonna need to post a photo. So I'll start with my flour. I'm just gonna chuck that over the top. Get rid of my bowl. Uh, and then my salt and my baking soda that's already been pre Great. So this is a really important thing to understand is that when we, want to, when we put this in, we want to fold it through the mixture. We don't want to mix it too heavily. Uh, otherwise, it's going to become quite thick and dense. Uh, what we want to do is just fold that in like so. So be really gentle with your mixture. Fold it around. Uh, how do we know if we're done? Well, the mixture will... You won't be able to see any of the dry flour uh, and it will look quite smooth and wet. through nicely. I can't see any uh, large chunks of flour remaining within this batter. At this stage you need to take a photo of this and post it within your Google Doc. Oh, hello there. Right, I folded through my flour. Now it's time to add my remaining ingredient. Now if you're not having any nuts or any chocolate then at this stage you can skip this part. But I'm going to add some chocolate, a little bit of dark chocolate in my banana bread. So I'm going to scatter that over the top. I dropped a bit there so I can just go back in. Great, so that's over the top. 
I'm now going to just, in the same way I folded before, I'm going to fold that chocolate into this mixture. So that it's spread out evenly. The last thing you want is one part of your cake to have all the chocolate uh, and other parts with no chocolate. You want to have it nice and spread out. Great, so now at step nine, we want to get this batter into our pre-prepared pan. So, lifting up the mixing bowl, using your spatula, make sure you get it all off the sides. You don't want to waste any, it all tastes good. Uh, if you need help at this stage, you can ask a friend or a family member to help out. Uh, and we're going to drop that in. Because this is quite a wet mixture, it will sort itself out within the pan, so it'll drop in nicely and then uh, form out to the sides. I'm going to get the majority of that out and then uh, I want to just go once around again and make sure I get all of the mixture there. I don't want to waste any at all. Now when you get to this stage you want to try and smooth out just a little bit. So push it down on the sides there, get it into the corners, make sure it's all spread out. Uh, and then just give your tin a little bit of a shake. Uh, and that will get rid of any air pockets at the bottom and make sure that it's nice and evenly distributed. Don't forget, at this stage, you need to take a photo of this before it goes into the oven. So, get your camera out, take a photo, post that photo in Google Classroom. Now it's ready for the oven. We're going to take this over. My oven has been preheating this whole time I've been mixing this together. It's now at 175 degrees, so that means it's ready to cook. So, I'm going to put this in on the middle shelf. It's going to sit nicely at the front there. Close it up and I'm going to give that about 50 minutes in the oven. At 50 minutes I'm then going to take it out and test it to see if it's ready. So it's been about 50 minutes, now I want to check my banana bread, see if it's done. So you've got to be really careful at this stage because this is going to be really hot. So make sure you don't touch anything around the sides and make sure you've got your oven mitts to protect your hands. So I can take this out and pop it up here. Now, I've got my cake tester and a little bit of paper. Uh, you can also use a tea towel if you don't have any paper kicking around. So, I'm going to stick this straight in to about the middle here. Uh, and then pull it out and see if it's done. You might hit a uh, piece of chocolate. If you do that, uh, just try another spot and pull out. Now, you can see it's come up with a little bit of cake left on the cake tester. That indicates to me that it's not ready yet and I need to put it back in the oven. So we'll put that back in and give it another five minutes and then check it again. Right, so it's been about five minutes. I'm gonna check it again and see if it's done. It smells really good. That's come out clean. It's also come out clean. That one hasn't come out clean, but you can see I've hit a patch of chocolate. So that's fine. The last two came out clean. This one's just hit a bit of chocolate. The chocolate's a little bit melted, so that's fine. It's going to look like that on the stick. So that's ready. That's done. We're going to now, I've broken that. <laughs> we are going to transfer this onto our cooling rack where it's going to sit in the pan for five minutes while it sets. Uh, after five minutes, we're then going to take it out of the pan and let it rest on the cooling rack for a further ten minutes. So that banana bread has now chilled for about five minutes in the tin. I'm now going to take it out, so I remove it down here. It's still a little bit warm, so be careful, make sure it's not too hot. I'm going to use now this paper as a, a bit of a handle to help get this out of this tin. So it's come out quite nicely there. I'm going to sit it on the uh, cooling rack, open it up. Uh, that is now going to sit for another ten minutes. Alrighty, so 10 minutes on, and this banana bread has had time to chill. So now I'm going to cut it open, we'll see what it looks like inside. Uh, we'll taste it and we'll see how it went. So, take it off the paper there. It's still pretty fragile, so you've got to be careful with it when you deal with it. I'll throw that in the bin, you won't need that anymore. So, move the cooling across. I'm going to take a piece from the side here, cut straight down, gently. Beautiful, that looks great in there. Nice and set, it's very moist still, not too dry. 
Uh, and I've got this piece here, so you can still see a little bit of steam coming off that. And mm. this is delicious. So hopefully it went well for you at home. Don't forget, you need to take a photo of your finished product. So take a photo of the finished product, post it on the recipe sheet that you've got, submit all that to Google Classroom, and now you've learned the great skill of making banana bread.